Yo, what up? Welcome to Tuesday, 5 p.m. Um, today's class is uh, not based off the birthday flow, uh, but just very similar. Um, it felt nice to just like move in that class. So today we're going to do the same thing. Um, there will be plenty of opportunities to play. Um, lots of handstands if you're choosing that option. Um, and also every other arm balance because that's what I like to do. Um, go at your own pace. Modify when needed. All the good things you typically hear at the start of a yoga class. Insert that here and we will get started. Um, so we're going to find our way into laying on our backs, but Ballast is the playlist uh, that we will be listening to. So if you don't already have that up, uh, Spotify.com backslash, I don't know the URL, um, but <laughs> it is Ballast. I don't think Spotify has a URL. The web browser might, uh, but it looks like something like that. That's not a depiction of what it looks like at all, but uh, it technically was it. So if you are listening with me on Spotify, um, we are going to start that in three, two, one. And then as it's get going, uh, we are just going to lay down on our backs to start. So lay down the back, knee, feet can spread wide, arms will reach overhead, form a giant letter X on the floor. Maybe pick the head up, set it back down. Maybe pick the shoulders up, set them back down. So all those things are flat on the floor. Wherever you are at, Ed, ooh, words starting, wherever you are at in the breath cycle, just exhale out all the breath now. And stay there at the bottom of the breath. And then take a deep inhale breath through the nose. Pause at the top of the breath, hold it. And then an audible exhale out the mouth, everything. And then pause and again at that empty breath. And two more of these deep inhale breath through the nose. Hold the breath at the top and then audible X out the mouth. Good. Last one, deep inhale, breath of the nose. Hold the top and then audible X out the mouth. Good. See the lips. Nostril breathing from here on out unless you can for any reason. Whenever you're ready, bring both knees into the chest, the hand to each knee. And start to guide them in a big clockwise circle. And the bigger you go, the more massage on the low back you get. So if you don't even want to use the hands, you can. Um, just release the knees and make even bigger circles. And that'll slightly get into the abdominal region as well. Um, work in there. And then whatever way you're going, just switch directions opposite way. Yeah, the knees will come to center. You'll hold the right knee in and then send the left leg forward when you're moving pose. Hug the knee out to the shoulder, in towards the ribs. Try to find thigh to meet rib cage contact. Really feel the inner thigh start to release pressure here. So you're not flexing or engaging the thigh. You're just kind of pulling it in close to feel the tension release. Yeah, and then use the right hand, guide the knee over to the right. Um, you can grab the big toe, but it's very, very early in class, so you don't need to. But like, if you're like, I want the big toe, then grab the big toe, man. Do you, it's your practice, what do you want? And we're only here for a little bit of time. So from here, and use the right hand, guide it center, and then the left hand takes over, take it all the way over to the left. Again, we can extend the leg if you want to, but it's like literally the first three minutes of class. It doesn't have to be the most intense, insane stretch and sensations that you can find. Good. Bring the right knee back center. And both knees to chest, wrap the arms around the knees, gentle squeeze. And then you keep the left leg, send the right leg forward when you're moving pose. Same thing, hug it out to the shoulder, in towards the ribs, bring it in, feel the thigh start to release. Good, and the left hand opens up the knee, open it to the left. And then left hand guides at center, right hand takes over, take it all the way over to the right, add your twist. Now we are doing this kind of chain of actions repeatedly through the class. So we teach the Pada Hustasana, pretend I said that right, um, and then Iron Cross. Um, so just know throughout class, if you need to have the knee bent, bend it, bring it back center. And if you need to straighten the leg, straighten it. So I'm not gonna say bend the knee, straighten the leg every single time because there are so many of them. Um, but if you keep the knees bent the whole time, like that's totally cool. Hands gonna have the thighs start to rock and roll. Forward and backwards, gain momentum, come up to a seated position. Once you arrive, feet go wide, hands come behind the hips, just windshield wiper the legs a few times, increase that range of motion or get into that range of motion there.
Good. And then do both sides evenly. Come back center. Reach the hands in between the legs and then grab the big toes or pinky toe side edge of the feet. It's like a deep squat, but you're sitting on the butt. So it's the most enjoyable of a deep squat there is. So from here, use the hands, start to pull the feet towards you. Try to move the chest towards the feet, but then up. So not moving down towards the feet, going straight forward and up to the sky. Again, it's like a deep squat. Pretend like you're standing, but like I didn't want to do that yet. So we're sitting on the butt. It's a good thing to do. Also know if you deep squat hurts you or hurt your knees, this is a perfect place to come back every single time. Good, from here, release the feet, cross the ankles, roll over the front or any other way you need to get to a high plank position. Hands under shoulders, feet hip width distance. Right away, we will plankles, um, or do some plankles as in keep the high plank arm to just move the, uh, the heels back and forth. I was gonna say on the knees, and I guess they're moving too, but like the heels, the ankles, that's why it's called plankles because you're, Planking and your ankles are moving. Plankles. Get over here for five and four and three and two. Bring it center and then just lower all the way down to the belly. Good. From there, reach the arms forward. We're going to take locust pose, which I never take because I don't like locust, but we're going to do it anyway. So zip up the feet together and start to reach the arms forward. And when you're ready on the deep inhale breath, lift everything up. So hands and feet rise. It's like you're Superman, but you're so lazy. You're just laying on the belly. But we're here for five. Good. Hold it. Four. And three. And two. Airplane wings. Look to your right side and then release. Left ear will find the floor. You gaze to the right side. And shin to mat. And second set, we'll start with airplane wings. They stay back. Feet can stay together or apart. Just lift the feet, lift the arms up to the sky. Cobra pose. So we're here for five. Yeah, locust pose. We're here for four. And three. And two, look towards the left side. Slowly release down to the floor. Good, chin to mat, hands come next to the rib cage. It's cobra of your height, press through the hands, lift the chest as high or as low as you'd like to be. When you're ready, child's pose, big toes touch, knees widen, and sit it back to the heels. Good, your inhale breath takes you tabletop. Your own exhale, downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips to the sky. Walk the dog and shake it out, walk it out. Anything that you need to do, you're familiar with a down dog, but can you become more familiar with it? As in, is there a new sensation in the body that you can kind of examine or learn in this familiar shape? Then from the inhale breath, take the right leg up to the sky. Runner's lunge, knee to nose, step between the hands. Good, we'll tend the fingertips, look forward, start to bend that back knee, hover. And then shift it back, straighten both legs, little or a lot. Does not have to be all the way straight. And two more of these. So bend both knees, back knee will hover. Good. Shift it back, straighten the legs. Last one. Bend both knees, back knee will hover. And shift it back, straighten the legs. Good. From there, forward fold, step forward, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, flatten spine. Exhale, fold, hands to floor. Inhale, rise, take the arms all the way up to the sky. Forward fold, take it back to the floor. Good, inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, flatten. And plant hands, vinyasa, step or hop, high to low plank, or any other route you want to get to down dog is totally up for grabs. Yeah, then from the down dog right away, take the left leg up to the sky, inhale, breath. And so runners lunge, knee to nose, step it through. You'll tend fingertips, look forward, bend that back knee, hover, and then shift it back, straighten the legs. Good, two more of these, bend both knees, back knee will hover, and shift it back, straighten the legs. Last one, bend both knees, back knee, hovers, and then shift it back, straighten the legs. I hope that was as funny as they thought it was. It's probably not funny at all, it's okay. Forward fold, step forward, top of the mat. Good, inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, flatten spine. Exhale, fold, bring it down. Inhale, rise, flat back, arms up. And then forward fold, take it back to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, flatten. And vinyasa, plant the hands, step hop, your choice. And of course, if you are hopping back, it's a low plank, elbows bend every single time. 
Yeah, from here, still warming up, we're gonna take three sun salutation A's. Um, if you don't know what a sun salutation A is, you'll find out, sure enough, um, but we'll get to it. So from here on the inhale breath, rise high to the toes, look forward, and then exhale, bend the knees, step or hop, forward fold. Right away, inhale, halfway lift, find length. Exhale, fold to the floor. Good, inhale, rise, flat back. If a back bend is calling you, you can take it. When you're ready, forward fold, bring it down. And take your time, inhale, halfway lift line length, and then plant the hands vinyasa. So that is a sun salutation A. We're going to do two more. The back bend at the top is totally optional. Um, I'm not a big back bender. Obviously, you know that by now. Um, but if you want to hit that top, uh, stay there a little bit longer. Enjoy the space there and join us when you're ready. From here on the inhale breath, high on the toes, look forward. Exhale, bend the knees, step or hop forward, forward fold. Good. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shin, slot and spine. Exhale, take it down. Good. Inhale, rise, flat back, back bend if you choose or skip. When you're ready, forward fold, take it down. Good. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shin, flatten. And plant hands. Vinyasa, your choice, your route. And if you're still moving, take your time. There's no rush. The cool thing about a Sun Salutation A series is you know exactly what's happening so you can take as much time and honestly skip out it when you need to. Um, a lot of times I skip my halfway lift uh, because I handstand instead. So fun fact. Last one, inhale high on the toes, look forward. Exhale, bend the knees, step or hop forward, forward fold. Good, inhale halfway lift, find length through the spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, flat back, arms all the way up. Forward fold, bend the knees, take it to the floor. Good. Inhale, halfway lift, find length through the spine. And plant hands. Vinyasa. I was going to say last one, but it's definitely not the last. Last of the sun salutation that series. Cool. Round one. So each round, we're going to start um, with a handstand. The sequence is handstand to chair pose to stork pose, well, perch pose to stork. Um, so if you're working on the handstand and you want to stay there, you know that chair pose, perch pose, stork pose are coming up. So take your time there if you need to. But the first one, we're just going to play. From this for here, uh, take a right leg up to the sky and held breath. And I just want you to step the foot about halfway forward and keep the arm strong and then use that foot to jump to handstand. And if you fall, go back to down dog, try it two more times. So you get two, three hops total, three attempts. That foot steps halfway forward as you try to hop it up. And gaze should be somewhere in between the index finger nails. Last one, if you got it right, leg goes up. Right foot steps halfway, you try that hand, stand. We find a chair pose in five. Good, chair pose in four. And chair pose in three. In two. And chair pose, heels so such, or the gap, your choice, but weight is in heels, gaze forward. From there, it's perch pose, airplane wings, bow the torso parallel, and take a deeper bend in the knees, sit nice and low here. See if you can turn the legs on a little bit more, make this perch suck. Good. Right leg, stork pose, take the right leg up to the sky. From there, you'll stay or straighten the right leg, hold it five. Good, squeeze it four, and for three. And two, slowly it's runner's lunge. Right foot takes a big step back. You'll drop the hands to frame the foot. Once you land, left arm goes to the sky. We add the twist. So twisted lunge. From here, our sequence is a side plank. If you want to stay here, we come back, back here. It's totally fine. But for everyone else, side plank. Right foot turns to side. Left foot can step back. We can drop the knee, lift the left leg. Anything you need to do, side plank five. Your side plank for four. And for three. And two, twisted lunge, take that left foot back to the top of the mat if you lost it. Readjust the stance about hip width distance, legs are strong. And then when you're ready, vertical twist, keep the arms, just bring the torso over the hips. And maybe look to left hand, hold it five. Good, four, and three. And two, your left arm's gonna swing under. Both arms up to the sky, meet the palms, look to them, retie, maybe soft, lean back five. And four, and three. And two, hands to floor. It's a three-legged high plank. So just step that left foot back, left foot hovers, stay, or one full push-up. Good. From there, bring the knee into the nose. And then it's high plank or push-up. Left knee, right elbow. So cross the body. It's a high plank or push-up. And then last one, left knee, left elbow, stay there. And three-leg down dog, left leg goes up. 
And then crescent lunge, need to know, step it through, through. <laughs> and back toes tuck, you'll lift the arms up to the sky. So I'm gonna call that the three point plank. The idea is a high plank or a push up to hit the knee to nose, knee to opposite elbow, knee to the same elbow. Makes sense, cool. Inhale, breath, reach up to the sky. And then airplane wings, bow the body halfway forward, stay there. And stay or add the challenge, right arm, maybe both arms forward, hold it five. Good, four, three, two, airplane arms back. Into stork pose, big jump, right leg lifts. Into funky chair, flex the ankle over the knee, and bend the knee, sit low. And keep this ankle flexed over the knee, and sit low, we're here for five. Good, hold it for four. And for three, two, stork pose, right leg lifts. Stay or straighten the leg, hold it five, and four, and three, and two, mountain pose, heels, toes, touch, hands hard. Inhale, take the arms up to sky, and then forward fold, bend the knees back to the floor. Good, inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, flatten spine, and plant hands, vinyasa, crow pose, if you really want it, I'm not there yet, but you can take it if you want. You're in down dog, in five. Four, and three, and two, and again, we're going to stand, finding that baby hop step or so. So the left leg is gonna go up to the sky. You look in between the index fingernails, and he'll stay. Exhale, foot steps halfway forward. Use that foot to jump to handstand. And again, if you stick it cool, stick it, hold it. If not, you get three attempts. Wherever you are, we find a chair pose. In five. And chair pose in four. Oh. And chair pose in three. In two. Just know you also might just be holding a really long chair pose if you don't want to handstand, that's another option. And chair pose, if you're not already there, we're here. From there, perch pose, airplane wings, sit lower in the legs, make this suck but feel the chest lift a little bit more forward. Feel the heart go forward. Good, left leg stork pose, left leg lifts. To stay or straighten that leg, hold it five. Squeeze the hamstring four, and three, and two, runner's lunge, foot steps back, hands to floor. From there, the twist, lift the right arm up to the sky. Legs can stay as for now, arms stay regardless. Good, now your choice is stay here, we will come back. Forward side plank, that right foot steps back again. What side plank do you need this to be? We're here for five. Hold it four, and three, and two, back where we were, right foot steps to the top of the mat. Readjust the stance, right arm lifts if you lost it. From there, keep the legs, it's vertical twist, keep the arms, just lift the chest. And maybe look to that right hand, hold it five. Good, hold it four, and three, and two, right arm swings under as you take the arms up, meet the palms, look to them, maybe soft, lean back five. Good, four, three, and two, slowly high plank, plant hands, right foot will step back to hover. Here's that three push-up plank. So we stay here, or full push-up. Right knee to nose, bring it in. High plank or push-up. Right knee, left elbow. High plank or push-up. Right knee, right elbow, pause. Three leg down dog, right leg up. And then crescent lunge, knee to nose, step it through. Back toes tuck, you lift the arms up to the sky. So again, I hope you got that. It's a knee to nose, opposite elbow, same elbow. And that's gonna make more sense in the round two. Don't worry about it. From here, inhale the arms up. And then airplane wings, exhale, bow, halfway forward. Good, stay here, add the left arm, maybe both arms forward, your choice, your challenge, hold it five. And keep it four, and three. And two, airplane arms back. To stork pose, big jump, left leg comes up. From there, funky chair, flex ankle over knee, and bend the knee, sit low. And keep the hips moving back, keep the chest moving forward, five. Good, hold it for four. And three, and two, stork pose, left leg up to stay or straighten the leg, hold it five. Finish four, and three, and two, mountain pose, close center. Gorgeous, inhale, arms up. And forward fold, bend the knees, take it back to the floor. 
Good. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shin, flatten spine. Crow pose or vinyasa. Land the hands. I'm taking the crow pose this time because I said it. Didn't mean to say it, but I said it anyway. So we're going to do it. We're here for five. Good. Hold day four. And three, two, step or hop vinyasa. Your choice. Down dog in five. And four. Three. Cool. So we will start the same way. It is a handstand. You have the opportunity to send the right leg up and try to baby step that handstand. Or if you just want to jump both feet to the sky, which is option two, that is your choice. Again, you get three hops, no more. You could do less, but no more. When you're ready, look in between the index fingernails. Focus on the arms. Keep them strong. Your attempts at a handstand. We meet in that chair pose in five. Chair pose in four. Three. And two, land the feet, bend the knees, arms up to sky, chair pose, inhale breath. And then perch pose, airplane wings, make it suck. Stay here or your challenge, hover the right foot, kick the butt, hold it five. But allow that to lift the heart, hold it four. Good, three. Two, stork pose, right leg lifts to stay or straighten the leg, hold it five. Four. And three, and two, warrior three, right leg flies back, arms go wherever, and belly strong, five. Good, four, and three. And maybe no hands, you'll just land that right foot back, runner's lunge, and then we drop the right hand, lift left arm, find your twist. Good, stay here, or side plank. Your challenge this time is that right knee, go left knee, left knee, goes as high to the sky as you can, Feeling an arching under your right armpit, lift it higher, hold five. Hold it four, three, and two. Slow this down, right knee comes to chest. Can you land the left big toe first? The left foot forward, not right. Don't ignore the right. Twisted lunge, left foot forward. Once you've got it, vertical twist or exalted warrior. So you go halfway or all the way, the choice is yours. Hold it five, and four, and three, Two, to take the arms up, crescent lunge, back bend, or skip it just a moment. Belly strong, slowly hands to floor, high plank. Left foot hovers, back stay, or full push up. When you're ready, left knee to nose, high plank or push up. Right elbow, high plank or push up. Left elbow hold, listen close. Can you flex the left foot, cross the ankle over the right knee, and then walk the hands back to the foot, it's funky chair on the right. You'll bend that right knee deep, and then when you've got it, hands come heart center, take the gaze forward. Feel the heart lift, the hips move back. Breathe. Good, yeah, then from here we play with Yogi Toe Lock, your left index and middle finger are gonna grab your left big toe. Once you've got it, come to stand, bring the foot in towards the crotch, so the knee will stay bent. Stay here, or Tita, straighten that leg. And the right arm can do anything you'd like. But I want you to use the left hand, try to lift that left foot higher. Now try to keep the foot exactly where it is. Look at the foot, keep it there as you release the left hand, move it anywhere, five. Good, don't let it fall, four. And three, two, crescent lunge, big step forward. Adjust the stance, arms to sky when you're ready. Different this time, meet the palms. Hands come heart center, we'll prayer twist to the left. So right elbow, left thigh. Use that contact, work the uh, hands together, and eventually thumbs come center line of the chest. From here to chair twist, I want you to try to float it. So you'll look down to left big toe, shift forward, bring the right knee to meet the left, kick the butt or drop the foot if you need to, but we're here for five. Good, can you keep left knee bent four? Three, and two, stork pose, bring it up to iron cross. Your left hand is gonna guide your right thigh or the foot Right arm reaches back. So we're twisting the other way, opening the arms to the right. You're here for five. Good, hold it four, three, two. Can you bring your right arm forward to meet the left? Right index and middle finger will grab that big toe lock. Left arm releases. From there, Utita Hasta, open up that hip. So right leg is going to the side. And again, you might hold, be holding the knee, that's okay. We're here for five and four, three, and two, Phoenix pose. Your right leg is going to cross behind the left. 
you'll bend the left knee as you take both hands to the floor. So the right leg is going more off to the side than back. Hands are on the floor, but the weight is in your left foot. From there, stay or add the twist and take that left arm to the sky. And feel the left hip move back, the right hip moves forward. Good, now your left foot should be on the floor, your right hand would be on the floor, almost like a twisted lunge would be. So we're gonna take this twisted lunge, right foot just steps to the back of the mat. From there, it's wild thing, left foot steps behind the hips. You lift the hips as high as you can, hold a five. Good, any option, hold a four and three. And two, drop the hand, three leg down dog, left leg up, inhale, breath. Left knee, left elbow, shift forward, try to touch it, pause. And three leg down dog, left leg up. To falling star, left knee, right elbow, kick the leg out. And back heel spins, right arm lifts, it goes high, hold it five. Hold it four. And three. And two, plant the hand, three leg down dog, left leg to sky. And to runner's lunge, knee to nose, step it through. Good, you'll turn fingertips, look forward, inhale. Hips back, straighten the leg, and maybe roll onto left heel. Left toes go high, you take it deeper. Left heel to right hip, move back, left hip forward, make it deep, roll, there it is. Do not panic, it's standing splits. Shift forward, plant hands, just lift that right leg up to the sky, hold it five. Really work the standing splits for. Good, keep it three. And two, stork pulls, right knee to nose, bring it all the way up to stay or finish straight leg five. And four, and three, and two, mountain pose, heels, toes, touch, hands, heart. Gorgeous, inhale, arms to the sky when ready. And then forward fold, bend the knees, take it to the floor. Good, inhale, halfway lift, find length through the spine. And plant hands, triceps, knees to triceps, that is, crow pose, or skip it. If you got one legged crow, might work that right knee center, maybe right leg back five. Four. Three, two, step or hop, and then yasa. Cool, so we hit that second side again. We start with the handstand. You can do the left foot to the sky, left foot half step handstand. You can jump off both feet handstand. You could also just go to chair pose when we do there. Your choice, your challenge. When you're ready, look in between the next three nails. Do not bend the arms. High on the toes, inhale breath. Bend the knees, hop, float, whatever you need to do, handstand. I'll meet you in uh, chair pose. In five. And again, three hops. No more. Four. I don't know if you heard that. I hope you didn't for three. <laughs> and two. And chair pose. And from the chair pose, perch pose, airplane wings, bow. And then stay there or hover that left foot, but don't let the chest fall. Lift it instead. Hold it five. Good. Four. Three. And two, stork pose, left leg comes up to stay or straighten, hold it five, and four, and three, and two, warrior three, left leg back, body strong. It's like the worst yoga teacher Kuyu ever. Make your body strong. I say it all the time, it's fine. Good, so again, we're taking the runner's lunge. You might not use hands, just bend that right knee, land the back foot, and then we land the left hand, add the twist, right arm high. Feel supported in the arms when you're ready. Side plank your challenge. That right knee goes to the sky. Really reach it up. Hold it five. Good. Keep it four. And three. And two. Slowly right knee to chest. How soft can you land that right foot forward? And twisted lunge. You'll adjust the legs once there. And then when you're ready, vertical twist. Bring it up. And maybe look to right hand. Maybe exalted. Hold it five. And four. And three. And two, right arm swings under, crescent lunge, the back bend just for a moment. Belly strong, slow motion, hands to the floor. Right foot steps back to hover, plank stay, or a push up. When you're ready, right knee to nose. High plank or push up. Left elbow. Good, high plank or push up. Right elbow, you'll hold. Flex the ankle, cross it over your left knee. And then walk the hands back to stand. Funky chair. So that right ankle cool flex, hips sit nice and low. Then you look forward and lift the hands heart center. And move the hips back again, get that hips. Get that hips to stretch, that's grammar. Sure, sure. I'm tired, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, and you realized it. Oh, uh, good. Yogi toe lock, index and middle finger on the right big toe. Lift the chest up. And again, bring the foot to crotch to start. 
You might stay here just working this foot higher or if you're ready, straighten the leg. And again, left arm does whatever you need to do. But from here, I want you to use the right hand, lift that left right foot higher. Do not drop that foot. Release the hand, hold it five. And four, three, and two, crescent lunge, step it forward, readjust. Hmm. When you're good to go, hands come heart center. And prayer to us, left, right side, right elbow, left elbow, right thigh. Press the palms. And again, you're, I was gonna say thirsty, and that is like my favorite cue now. Your, your chest is thirsting for those thumbs. I really need to stop saying it. Good, we're going chair twist. I want you to see you float. Um, so shift forward, 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 forward. Bring your left knee to meet the right, kick the butt. Try to hover it or land the foot if you need to. Five, good, four, three, two, iron cross. We'll bring it up to stork pose. Right hand will grab the knee or the foot. Left arm reaches back, so you're twisting the other way. If you want the challenge, look to that left hand, five, four, three, and two, left hand meets the right. Left hand yogi, toe lock the left foot, right arm lifts high. When you're ready, open the hip, open the knee. Again, this night, knee might be bent, that's okay, five. Open hip for four, and three, and two, left leg crosses behind, Phoenix pose. So you'll bend the right knee as you slide that left leg far. Hands stay on the floor to stay or add your twist, right arm lifts. But again, I'm pressing the right foot down, right knee should feel okay. If it doesn't, shorten the distance, bring the left foot closer to the right. Left hand stays, your left foot will step to the back of the mat. And then it's wild thing, right foot steps behind the hips. Lift the hips, lift the hips five. Good, hold it four, three, and two, drop the hands, three leg down dog, right leg high, inhale breath. And right knee, right elbow, shift forward, touch it. And three leg down dog, take it up. Good, left elbow falling star, kick the leg out. Back heel spins, left arm goes high to the sky, hips rise with it, five, four, and three. And two, drop hands, three leg down dog, right leg up. Into runner's lunge, knee to nose, step it through. And 10 fingers, look forward, lift the chest. And then shift it back, straighten both legs, maybe roll onto the right heel, make it deeper. But again, that right hip still moves back, increase the stretch. It's dog hair in my foot, gross. When you're ready, don't overthink it, it's standing split, shift forward, plant hands, left leg to the sky, push it, five, work it harder, four, it was supposed to be a song, but I didn't know, actually know the words. Three and two, stork pose. Left knee to chest, bring it all the way up to the sky. Stay or straighten the leg, hold a five. Good, four and three and two, heels, toes, touch, hands, heart. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Forward fold, bend the knees, take it down. Good, inhale, halfway lift, line length through the spine. And plant hands, knees to try such curl pose or vinyasa. If you took that one-legged crow, it is the left knee that hovers center. Maybe it goes back. Your choice, five, mm, four, three, two, step, hop, vinyasa. Anything you need to do. Land the breath. So really quick, um, if you're vinyasa, you're vinyasa. Um, I do want to go over that utita hasta to the Phoenix pose, possibly baby grasshopper. So look at me, I'll do it straight towards you. Hopefully you can see me and I'm gonna slide in because apparently that's where we're at. Um, but we're iron cross here. You don't need to see my head, it's fine. Uh, but iron cross here, maybe the straight leg. From there, my back arm's gonna go where I grab the big toe. I'm gonna open up that leg. Going to Phoenix pose, this left leg is just crossing behind. The hands go to the floor, the leg is going off to the side, stay here, right arm to the sky, or if you've got, baby grasshopper in the practice. Boom, we're there. Five, four, three, two, one. The foot is gonna step back into the wild thing. The rest, you know. So it is a little bit, I think it's a simple transition just because your leg is out wide, then it crosses behind and goes right where it needs to be. Um, but of course, if you don't know what a Phoenix pose is, um, then it's hard, challenging. <laughs> Makes sense, cool, let's do it. Round three. Now, we are starting the same way, handstand. If you've got the handstand, I want you to find a tr uh, try to find a cr uh, chair pose, chair pose in your handstand. So once the legs are up to the sky, you bend the knees and you just try to sit. Like, don't overthink it. 
And then if you got that, your challenge is to just land the left foot and bring it straight to perch. If you have no idea what any of that means, just don't worry. Handstands, when you're ready, we go. And again, you get three attempts at that handstand. Um, and if you are going for that float, your right foot will stay kicking the butt and you'll just bring the left foot down to land in the perch. We're in the perch in five. In four. In three. And two, right foot hovers, stays, or kicks the ceiling. Five. Perch pose for four. And three. And two, stork pose, right leg up, stay or straighten the leg, hold five. And for four. And three. And two, warrior three, right leg, flies back. Arms wherever, belly strong, body strong, five. And four. And three. Two, try no hand, just land that back foot, runner's lunge. And then we land the right hand, add the twist, left arm lifts. Now listen close. Side plank, you can take the knee to the sky. Other challenge, a yogi toe lock, index and middle finger, that left big toe. And back heel spins down, you can bring the foot in towards the crotch or send it up to the sky. But if you're going to the sky, can you press the hips forward five? Good, four. And three. And two, same control, that left foot goes to the top of the mat. Release the leg, big toe lock, take the left arm up. And then when you're ready, vertical twist or exalted warrior, you get to choose five, four, and three, and two, crescent lunge, arms high, back bend if you'd like, pause, and then hands to the floor, three-legged plank, that left foot steps back, hover. Stay there or your full push-up. And then it's left knee to nose, high plank or push-up. Right elbow, high plank or push-up. Left elbow, pause. Flex ankle over the right knee, walk it back. If you want to try the toe stand, your toes will stay tucked. You just sit to the heel and then walk the hands back up. Try to balance. Now, I run a lot these days, so this is not anything that I want to do. Um, so I'm going to just find that funky chair. Um, heel down. But if you've got the toe stand, eventually hands heart center. Um, Imagine gripping through the toes and imagine do that. It'll help stabilize it a little bit more. Um, but also just know like you don't have to toe stand. I never do because toe stand's the worst. Um, you can also flying pigeon, flunky chair. We're here for five and four and three and two. Left yogi toe lock, bring it up to stay or straighten that left leg, bring it higher. Try not to lean back. So bring the heart towards the left foot and then keep the foot there, release the hand five. Hold it for three and two, crescent lunge, big step forward. Good, readjust, arms go high to sky, inhale breath. And then hands heart center, prayer twist to the left. Right elbow, left thigh. Chair twist, you have two options. Three, step, float, you know. Option three is you shift forward, forward, forward and just lift that right leg as high as you can. Option two is bring the right knee to meet the left. Option three, you drop that right foot. We're here for five. Good, four, work the twist. Three, and two, iron cross, your right leg comes up. Left hand will grab the knee, foot, whatever you need to do. And maybe look at that right hand. And five, and four, and three. Two, right arm meets the left, grab the big toe lock. Once you've got it, open out the leg. Five, and four, and three. And two, Phoenix or Baby Grass Upper. Right leg crosses behind as you take the hands to the floor. Left arm to sky for Phoenix Pose. Or if you've got that left hand, grab the right pinky toe side to the foot. Right arm will walk out. You lower into the right arm, Baby Grass Upper five. Wherever you are, four. And three. And two, right foot is gonna step back. Right hand moves under the shoulder. When you're ready, it's wild thing. Mm, just wild thing. Five. Four, three, and two, drop hand, three leg down dog, left leg high, inhale breath. Left knee, left elbow, hold or arm balance, any option, five. Good, four, and for three, and two, three leg down dog, take it up. Right elbow, falling star or side crow, you get to choose five, and four, and three. And two, drop the hand, three leg down dog, listen close, straight to the handstand or skip it. We're on that second side, we're running out of time, so just go. Try to find that chair pose. 
You get three hops. Don't overthink it. Uh, perch pose if you've got it. So the left foot will hover. Right foot will land. We're there in five. Ah, four. Three. Two. Right foot down. Left foot hovers. Perch pose. Arms back to stay or high five the ceiling. Five. Keep the bend. Left knee. Right knee. Four. Both knees. Three. And two. Stork pose. Left knee comes up. Stay or straighten that left leg. Hold it. Five. Four. And three. And two. Or your three. Take it back. Hands are not. It's a runner's lunge. Big step back. Right leg. Left leg. Left hand plants, right arm lifts. And setting up that side plank, if you want the big toe lock, you grab it right big toe and bring the foot towards the crotch, stay or straighten the leg as you try to press hips forward, five. Uh, keep it four, three, and two. How slow can you set that right foot and back forward? Once it's there, the right arm lifts. When legs are set, it's vertical twist, bring it up. To stay or exalt it, maybe exalt it by him. <laughs> Good, four, and three, and two, crescent lunge, arms to sky, stay or back in a moment, and then drop the hands, high plank, step it back to right foot, hover, and stay there, or full push up, <laughs> right knee to nose, high plank or push up, left elbow, high plank or push up, right elbow, pause, figure four, funky chair, Walk the hands back. If you took that toe stand you did, take it. If you took something else, take it. If you're going to funky chair, take it. So while we're here, just know um, I thought we were running out of time and now we're gonna have more than enough time. So sorry for pushing you through this, but you know, you're fine. It's called a uh, effort and not pain. Well, also pain, but you know, let's do it. Right, and it's a middle finger, big toe, bring it up, right foot in. Stay or tita straighten that leg. And take the foot high. Do not lean back. Stay or sh uh, lift the hand. Five, four, three, and two. Crescent lunge, big step forward. Leg set, arm side, inhale. Then meet palms, perch twist, right side. Left elbow, right thigh. Use that contact. Work this twist. And chair twist, step forward, flow forward, or just shift forward and lift that left leg high. You get to choose your chair twist variation five. And keep the bend right knee four. And three. And two, stork to iron cross, left knee comes up. Your right hand will grab the knee or the foot. The left arm reaches behind you. Maybe look at that left hand five. And four. Three. And two, left hand goes forward. Yogi toe lock, grab it. And then open out. And five, and four, and three, and two, Phoenix or baby grasshopper. Left leg crosses behind, hands drop. And to stay or lift the right arm, to stay or baby grasshopper, grab the pinky toe side of the foot. The left hand might walk out a little bit. You shift low five. Good, four, and three, and two. Left foot takes a big step back. Left hand moves under the shoulder. Right arm high to a wild thing. Right foot steps behind the hips. You lift the hips, hold it, five. And four, three, and two, drop hands, three leg down dog, right leg up, inhale, breath. Think strong, right knee, right elbow, or arm bounce, or skip it, five. And keep with me, four, and three, and two, drop leg, three leg down dog, up. Right knee, left elbow, falling star, kick it out. Auction arm bounce if you'd like, and five. Four, three, and two, drop hand, right leg high. Do not overthink it. Try your hands then. Last three attempts. Don't overthink it. Just go. And again, three hops. When you are done, it's the forward fold. That last was pathetic. Forward fold wherever you are. Separate the beat hip with distance. Bend the knees. Roll up the spine. And piece by piece. Head and neck, last thing up. Once you ride, some shoulder shrugs backwards. And some forwards. We take it home, take the arms up to the sky, inhale breath. And then forward fold, take it to the floor. 
good. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands to shins, flat and spine. And plant hands, last vinyasa. Your choice. Anything that you need to do. When you're ready, half pigeon. Straight into it. Um, so we'll take it on the right side. Your right knee will go to the right wrist. Ankle towards the left. Hips as even as you can. Stand hands, go deeper to forearms, or maybe the floor. Y'all made it. Good job, guys. Um, yeah. Um, I felt like that was harder than my birthday class, to be completely honest. My mat is definitely more, like, sweaty. Like, there's a lot of sweat going on, um, which is not, not, not normal. It's a very normal thing for me to sweat, but, like, I was wearing a headband last time, though. That's, that makes sense, so we'll, we'll blame it on the headband, because, again, that's going to solve all my, all my problems. <coughs> um, also, one thing to note, um, so... The first two rounds, we did handstands. And the third round, you can kind of have that sandwich handstand. So there was no break between the set, first side of round three um, and the second side, you went straight into it. Most likely, your handstands were sloppy AF as fuck. Mine were two. Um, and I just want you to take acknowledge of that. Um, and that reason is why I do um, or why I say that three jumps to handstand no more, um, because it's the same kind of concept. After three, three is a magic number. Schoolhouse Rock, we did not know that. Like, it is. Um, but three is a magic number. So three is a perfect amount. I find that after three, the more handstand attempts I do, the worse, the shittier, the sloppier they become. They become useless and just a waste of time. Um, so that's why I say three. Do something to reset. Take a break. Even if that's just like sitting up for a second and then jumping back in. Do something to separate the handstands, um, just to reset your form and get your mind um, refreshed. Switch sides. Um, you can go back to down dog, anything you want to do, your half pigeon, second side, get there. Um, and I think you'll you'll find uh, benefit in that. Um, and ideally, ideally, with handstands, um, why we don't land them is obviously for a number of reasons, but in my experience, um, when I was learning how to handstand, um, I found more success in less trying to find my handstand, um, but more success in trying to find where the energy was escaping in my handstand. Um, that's, if you look at a handstand, a handstand is a straight line. Everything is engaged, everything's going straight to the sky. Um, when we jump and our elbows bend, your energy went out the elbows. Or um, if I'm not looking forward, or if I'm doing a number of things, find um, if I want you to picture a handstand, if you want to look at me, you can, but a handstand is almost like a cylinder um, where everything's pushing in, uh, almost like a tornado or a cyclone. It's that kind of rounded shape that we're here and everything is rounded going up and it's all this kind of spire or column as you will. Um, so in order to handstand, we need to keep everything in. Um, and when we fall out, it's most likely popping out somewhere. Um, so if you're not landing the handstands, number one, get the hips over the head. Um, and stop bending your arms. But after that, um, just really try to uh, record yourself and kind of look at this and see, okay, what am I doing? Because I've seen some people um, who do the chest bump handstand, which it looks like this, um, where we go to handstand. And as soon as my hips go over my head, a chest bump or banana asana, as you will. Um, and there's also the people that don't jump as high as you can. And every single person with your sloppy elbows. Um, for me, I think I practice not bending my elbows for at least a month before I worked on anything else. Because if your elbows are bending when you're jumping, you are not going to find your handstand ever. You will eventually. You can you can find a bent arm and straighten it, but it's hard to do. So straighten your arms, start with the foundation, work yourself from there. If you want a private, holla at your boy. I got an open schedule these days. Um, we're done, no half pigeon, or we did half pigeon. You're done with the second side is what I meant. Um, so you'll shift that over, come to a seated position. Um, we'll send both legs forward, seated forward, fold. Both legs straight forward on the floor. Wiggle around on the sit bones, get even between the two, and take the arms up, inhale breath, and then exhale, fold to the floor. Also, if you're confused with your handstand, like film yourself and like send me the video. Um, I will look at it for free and tell you what I see wrong. Um, because 
that's the thing about teaching yoga. Like once you learn how to teach yoga, um, it kind of is like this, it's hard to look at yoga the same. Um, and it's like, especially with me on Instagram, like when I see people post uh, Instagram like poses, like, oh, I just want to tell them what they're doing wrong all the time, um, all the time that I don't because I'm not an asshole. Um, but, you know, you see things and you're like, that arm could have been higher. That leg could have been not bent and all the things. So I'm just ranting at this point. And he'll come up. So we come up to sit. Coddler pose. Soles of feet come together. Knees go wide. You can grab the ankles, big toes, whatever you want to grab. Use that first. Lift the chest up. And then use it to pull down or just take the hands forward as you crawl. Yeah, so then bring it up, hands outside knees, bring the knees together, straighten out the left leg and then grab your right ankle, pull it back. We're gonna take half hero. Um, so if you know half hero is not in your cards, if you know full hero is what you prefer and you just wanna be there a long time, like cool. I like to do half because I find it more approachable for people's knees. Um, so one leg is bent, my right toes are hopefully going straight behind me. My right knee is hopefully pointed forward. Um, if I have to shift onto my left to kind of manage that, that's okay. Um, you also might sit on a pillow or like something else to just not have the pressure on your right knee. Um, this might be a perfect place to stay. Um, if you have a bad knee, please stay here. Um, if we do want to go deeper, hands come behind us. We can drop down to the forearms to start. Eventually, we can all the way down. Oh, I have not done this in a while. Um, all the way down the back. If you're on the back and you're like, this is so easy, you can do both legs. Or if you still want to work the one leg from here, only if this is okay. We'll bend that left knee. Once the foot is on the floor, I like to lift my hips up and place them back down and just kind of point the tailbone in a better direction. And you're here. It's like a super half hero. You can eventually even yogi toe lock the left big toe and up to the sky, but like you're on your own on that one. Um, I've seen it done, but I don't practice this enough to do it. So if you have this in your practice, it feels comfortable, like, and you feel like you can hit it by all means. Um, but this is, if this is straining, um, if it feels like, I don't know, then please do not. Um, cause the knees are like the number one thing that you don't want to replace. I made that up. I'm sure it is, but like, yeah, I, that was not a fact, <laughs> but like it is a fact cause who really wants to replace their knee? Who wants a knee replacement? Holla. No, I don't. I don't want a hip replacement. I'm probably going to get hip replacement when I grow up. Um, fun fact, if you practice Ashtanga, uh, religiously, um, you are going to need a hip replacement at some point in your life because they put the foot behind the head, which I can do, which is why I'm gonna get that paper replacement, that's fine. I've also stopped putting my foot behind my head because like, why? What's the purpose other to feel like an asshole in yoga class? That's the only thing. And for a teacher to call me out because no one else can do it. Being real with you. Foot behind the head, not worth it. Cool, we'll come out, um, straighten the left leg if it's bent. Come up to that seated position, forearms all the way up. We'll straighten the right leg forward. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> bounce it up and down. Send some love back to it. And then we hit the second side. Shift left, bend this left knee in, half hero. Left knee pointed forward, left foot toes pointed back. This knee might be different. This might be your bad knee. This is my bad knee. Um, so we stay here or we choose to go back. Again, forearms, back, bend the right knee. Whatever you want to do, don't be a hero. Because who are you trying to prove it to? Yourself, because no one else can see you. Um, and that means if you blow your shit out because I can't see you, it's your fault. Not your fault. Kind of your fault. Mainly your fault. Technically, it's my fault as well. But again, I can't see you. So, like, I'm trusting that you know your body. Also, if you ever want one, I don't want to do, put your foot behind the head, like, let me know because I know how to do it. <laughs> But again, I'm telling you, it's like really not that enjoyable or like cool. Not at all. Like it's, it's just, I'm stopping.
Now, if you're already on your back, you might just shift to the right, straighten the left leg out. If you need to come up, sit, straighten left leg out, and then go back down by all means. Once your left leg is straight, however you've got it there, bounce it up and down, some, some love back to it. And then we'll bend both knees feet to the floor. And separate the feet, mat with distance if you can. A few moments just to winch swipe the legs. If you've never done this mat with distance, it can be intense. So feel free to go shorter in distance if you need to. But try for the mat just for the extra bit of hips. And the next time you're on the right side, stay there. So the knees fall right. If that feels great, stay. If you want more, take your right ankle on your left thigh. Pull that down. Uncross the ankle if you did. Reset it, mat with distance, and you bring the knees center and then all the way over to the left. Mirror whatever you did, stay there or the left ankle on the right thigh. And then cross the ankle, bring knee center. Allow the knees to fall in towards each other. Allow the spine to kind of be neutral on the floor. You can stay here if you prefer supraphobic analysis. Soles will come together, knees widen in that diamond shape. Whatever option you are in, choose to stay there as long as you'd like. When you're ready, it's spinal shavasana, straighten the legs, and allow the arms to rest. And of course, if you're comfortable here, feel free to stay, enjoy the space, enjoy your time. But if you're ready to move on, invite some movement back into the body. Maybe a figure to a toe or really anywhere else that calls your name and calls your attention, wants your attention, get it. And allow the movements to start to grow, increase, shift, change, transform. Anything that you need to do to find a seated position works just the same. And once you find that seated position, it's up to you what that looks like as long as it's comfortable for you. When you arrive, you might wiggle around on the sit bones, get even between the two. Your hands can come heart center. Go along through the back of the spine, back of the neck, and chin can slightly bow. Once again, my name is Bobby. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, whatever the part of the day you are in. If you're with me on live, thank you so much for joining me. And if you're not, like I'm slightly offended, but I'll get over it, I promise. <laughs> with that being said, namaste. And thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday and or other day that you're watching this. Um, and if you're not watching it live, like, pop in a Tuesday every, every so often, like it's life changing, I promise. Have a good day.